Apps are getting more and more complicated and your screens can accumulate a lot of information and actions. One way of keeping them clean is using menus and context menus. I'm going to show you today how to use them. First, I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea what you can do with them. So usually context menus you find a lot in apps on the toolbar because you might have a lot of actions that, or buttons that you want to put in the toolbar, but it just doesn't fit, especially on iOS. So this is a way of gathering all these secondary action actions that you wouldn't usually do that often. So here for the freeform app, for example, you can change the list styling from a grid to a list style. You can do some sorting or selecting, for example, duplicate something. Another place where I use here actually a menu or it's actually a context menu. Context menu is the button or the view itself with a label, but you can also attach a secondary action, a long press gesture that opens these menus with a context menu modifier. So for example, here I can long press on this element and then I see here this context menu. For example, we can rename, favorite, duplicate, share or delete this. So I'm just going to delete this. Then similar when I'm in this document, they added the same actions to make it favorite duplicate to print export some of the actions they put outside as a, because they are more often prioritized so they use them there or you gather everything in this context menus the example that i want to show you how to program yourself is with this demo app that i made for this whole presentation topic i already implemented here a sheet for example or in one of the views with these popovers and now I want to add here this context menu in the toolbar to add a couple of buttons. This is really just a demo project. <laughs> I'm just adding some of the functionality. It might not be the best UX design app, but I thought, okay, maybe somebody wants to make this product favorite or share it, open a shopping cart or add here a tag. This is a picker and this kind of styling is actually new with iOS 17. Additionally to this one menu, I also show you some other examples of context menus, for example, in tables, or maybe you want to add some buttons to more images to show more information. Now let's have a look where I want to actually add my menu. This is in the product detail view. I have here an image, text, description, and this buy button. In the preview, I embedded this in a navigation stack. Otherwise I won't see my toolbar items. So I use the toolbar modifier. And you can add your buttons directly. In order to get this more button, I use title more and the icon is ellipsis.circle. So this is now a plain button, but I wanted to actually have a menu. Menu and button are very similar. Basically menu is a special button, which is why if you have a menu, you can style it the same as a normal button. Okay, now I have to instead use a menu where I can just give the title, content and label. You can also define a primary action. In this case, if you tap one time on this button, the primary action ex is executed. And if you long press on this button, then the whole list comes up. I'm going to have a look at this later. Now I go for content and label. Content is the list of all the buttons that I want to have. So let's say my I add one button that says add to favorites and I use here a heart image. So this is one, not very interesting. I'm just going to add two more buttons, one for share and one for open cart. I didn't add any uh, functionality in these buttons. So now I have these three buttons. If you want to format this a little bit, you can also add here dividers. This is then creating a separator, this kind of separator. The same would, I can achieve the same by putting the first two elements in the section. I'm going to take this out. You could also add here a sub menu. So there's nothing stops you from adding another menu in there more and then maybe I just add for now two dummy buttons because I don't have something in this example. So now I have one main menu and one sub menu and you get this arrow where you can open and close this. 
and then I can press on one of these actions inside. This looks a little bit different on the larger screens because you have more space in the horizontal direction. So now when I tap, you see here this arrow on the trailing edge and it's opening up this submenu. So you can add, you can stack as many menus as you want to. If you have subcategories, it is also interesting to here in this menu add another picker. For example, I want to add here tags to this product. I already added a tag color enum with seven cases of different colors where I get the Swift UI color from too. So and I want to create here a state property selected tag. This is my tag selected tag color and I just use here blue. Now I need to actually select something and I'm adding this here in my menu with a picker select a tag color, select binding to my selected tag color. And for the content, I am showing it for each of all cases. This is because I made tag the enum case iteratable. So I can ask for all cases, which returns an array of all cases. Tag in, and then I'm returning a label with the tags lower dot capitalized. And for the image, I'm using the tag image. Now I get here this picker. This is the default way it's displayed. Now it would be nice for my color picker to change the color. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. I can show you if you use the text color that even though I used here for the, each of these cells, a different color doesn't show up because it's set by the system. So you can't change this. The only one that you can actually change is if you, for example, have a delete button. I'm going to add this quickly with a trash bin delete. In this case, I really want to make sure that my delete button is more strong with a red color. And you can do this by setting the buttons role to destructive. So now this one button has a color. It's a little bit unfortunate. We can't set much with this. New with iOS 17 is now that we have a new picker style. Picker style and this is palette uh, and it's complaining. So I have to add here that I already set my target to iOS 17, but my Mac is not running on <laughs> 14 yet. So I have to here add, I'm just saying I ignore this on macOS for now. Conditionally checking the versions. It's only on iOS available. And now if I do this, you see, I have here this tag in a palette style. So in a horizontal scroll view it is in the scroll view because I have more than six elements. You can select them. It looks weird when I select it and it just adds another border around it. What I want to actually have is I rather fill them each of these tags when it's selected. And we also can do this by palette selection effect of symbol variant fill. This is now saying when it's selected, change the symbol and add fill. So you should only do this for, sim for a symbol where they have an additional one which is filled, like folder.fill or star.fill. Now if I go here and I select on something else, you see it's actually nicely filled. This kind of palette effect, palette style is very nice. Another way of making this menu is a little bit more compact. If you have a lot of them, you just end up with a very large list, is another new addition with iOS 17 and macOS 14, and this is the control group. So if you embed your buttons in a control group, now it's shown in a horizontal stack with the icon and the label. If you want to only use the icon, if you think it's clear enough, you can use the control group style of menu is the default, and I think it's compact menu. And now I only have these three buttons. If you have more than three, it's going to show them afterwards. So then you get more, again, this list. For example, if I try to do this and add one more button. Okay, it puts three inside and then the fourth one it puts below. So usually they try to optimize for space. Let's just remove the last two. So we only have this. The same menu on macOS now looks like this. So I have one menu for this control group. I don't have here a title. This is because I should have used the control group with title. For example, customize. 
And now this is bringing up this title. And then you can also navigate further. So this is another way of creating this nested menus. The other position where I tested this is here in this list of products. I want to filter. So this is another picker because I pick a category. It doesn't really work well because you shouldn't make your picker state property optional. Otherwise it really doesn't like it. So when I change the selection, I fetch this and then I can go back to all and fetch all again. So this is again a menu with a picker. So here I have my toolbar item with a picker. This kind of pickers, you have to look a little bit at the styling. So in this case, I use the picker style inline to get them in this line. So far, I only showed you the menus in the toolbar. I'm just going to give you a rough overview of how they look like if you put them on the main context somewhere in your views. So here I have a first button, which is the one on top, which is add new. It looks like a normal button. Only when you press it, it opens this menu with this, do you want to add a new album, new folder or new shared album? This is for example in the photos app, they use this like this. So then I just add here all of these buttons inside. Then I said that you can use here a primary action. This is execute when you tap. So here this is the menus with long press button. If I tap, it doesn't happen. I probably should add a print statement and then use the debugger. If you want to see the print statement from preview, you have to here go from executable to preview. And now when I tap on menus, I just tap shortly and this is printed. If I tap long, the context menu comes up with these three options. Another good example where you might want to use a menu is, for example, here I have an image and I want to show more information. So I added here this more button on the top right corner. When I tap, it opens, it gives me three options. So I just used here an overlay to align it to the top trailing edge with a little bit of padding. So this is this image that I use, ellipsis circle.fill. This is the label of a menu with just three buttons. When I looked at this, menu seemed to be more a thing that you put in the toolbar. Otherwise it's hard to get an overview where what is in your app. The other interesting thing that I could have done here with this image is that I directly tap on this image to bring up a context menu or long press on this image. And for this, I can use the context menu modifier. So context menu is a view modifier that you can attach to anything. You can attach it here to this text. So this first text, long press, it adds a little border around everything. And then in this case, it's the view modifier. And again, you can add a list of all the buttons or options that you want to have additional information. Usually it's buttons, I guess. You can also use the preview from context menu. In this case, it adds a little bit of extra. Or the interesting example is here with an image. So you just use one of the images I had and I attached afterwards a context menu. In order to see the context menu, you have to long press. And then I get the list of my, all my options. So I had here a section with a section title. You see this coming up here. If it helps for explaining what it does with two buttons, then I have another one for buy now and add to favorites. I added divider. So you get this divider and with a destructive button wall, I get this red delete button. The cool thing about context menu is you can also attach it to lists and tables. Like here I have a list of inventory items and then I can add the context menu to each of these items to add here two buttons. This would be copy and delete because I only selected here one element. The interesting thing is I didn't have to attach the context menu to the list item. You would have probably thought I put it here around the stack inside my list. I attached it around the list view. And now the question is how, do this, how does this context menu know which item to use? For example, when I say here delete, how do I know which item to delete? And this is within different context menu where you can say for selected type, inventory type is the type I have in my list. And then it understands to take the selected, the long pressed item from the list or actually the selected ones also.
on macOS. I have here these two columns because I use a navigation view. And now here, if you use the context menu, it adds this nice border so you know what you selected. And I can say here, delete this one. I didn't actually perform any destructive action in this case. <laughs> For macOS, it's probably more interesting to look at tables. So this is a table with the same type inventory items. I use these three parameters that I have of this type for name, part number, and quantity. So I have these three columns. And then to each of my table raw, I attach a context menu. And now when I right click or two finger click, I get this context menu with add to shopping list, quick buy and request now a number. Definitely most macOS have some kind of secondary action or right clicking that does something. So you probably end up using a lot of context menu on macOS. To wrap up, I hope I could convince you that using context menu and menus is quite useful for your iOS and macOS apps. This kind of secondary actions in the toolbar, especially now with this new picker style for palette, looks very nice. You can also use it on macOS for two finger click for additional actions. If you want to see more presentation tools in SwiftUI, you can watch the tutorial that I made for sheet and popover. Another one that is also interesting is alert and action sheets. So what do you show when something doesn't go your way? For example, when I try to here submit my feedback and I'm not actually connected to the internet, what do I do? I'm showing here an alert to tell the user, we can't actually do this for you. You want to check what's going on because you don't have internet or you want to just delete your review. In this case, I'm pushing back to the previous view. So go check that one out now. If you want to learn about alerts and action sheets, please leave a like or a comment if you found this video helpful. Until next time, happy coding.